you know, some, some advice and some tips for these younger players, some hockey training. Um, do you have any, any things that you've gone through in your days? Like I'm sure you, I remember you train really hard. I remember you always going for runs and, and whatever else you did. Um, you know what? I think a big one that I think a lot of things you're not taught really is everyone thinks just like heavy weights, heavy squats and all that kind of stuff. And I, the older I got, the worse my back got, but it's almost like there's just so many little bottle, uh, body parts and muscles everywhere that like, just like, like the band work, just that kind of stuff. And I don't know how kids train for the most part these days. It depends on, on, you know, their, obviously the team and the financial situation, but it's just like, you got to be able to con control your body and like the balance and everything. Right. It's, it's such a, uh, it's such a tough thing to do, but uh, you know, you, a lot of people don't know this, but you see like the goalies before games that are just doing like eye checks or where they're just, they're doing that just to strengthen their eye muscles and to get their hand eye and all that kind of going. It's, yeah. um, but it's, I'm happy that there's people that reach out to you and others that, that can, you know, help them to do it. It's hard. Like it's like everything. So it's hard to give somebody tips because everybody's different, right? Yeah. Everyone's body is different. Everyone's yeah. different. Um, yeah. Like you're saying, I'm sure you dealt with as you got your, your, career kept going past juniors too like being a bigger guy you probably need to stay athletic and be able to move yeah, for sure i've had a big guy out there and just kind of skate around three shoulder it. surgeries both knees both wrists um broken orbital bone cheekbone jaw broken my nose probably 15 plus times and the funny thing about that was i was supposed to have nose surgery after the season and in my last game my teammate fell and swung his stick back and it hit me in the nose but it actually like straightened it and made it so I can breathe it on my nose again. So I didn't get surgery. <laughs> so it was pretty funny. Like, uh, but as you can see, this nose has been through a lot, but. So for, for on like NHL training camps, when you went there, how, how would you, um, you know, share some things about how you trained? Uh, did you have to do like the VO2 max or the wing gate or any of those like being. Stuff? Like, so any types one of your, Mike Keenan was the head coach and he's just like a drill sergeant when it comes to that kind of stuff. We had to do a five mile run for time, a two mile run, uh, VO2, the wind gate. Uh, like we did like three days of testing and like how many pull-ups. And like, I, that's what I mean too, is like be functional to your sport. Like is a pull-up a really big, how many times do you do a pull-up in a hockey game? Um, you know what I mean? Like maybe for climbing into the stands or something, but uh, it's like, so yeah, be functional to the sport. But it was so different every team. like. When I was in Tampa, uh, Gary Melrose was the coach, and I don't, we didn't do any testing. So, and it's just like play hockey because you're at a point like, because I think I there's a lot of times I put too much focus into testing and trying to do too well on the testing, which took away from time of becoming a better hockey player. Like it's, I was focused like a, a two mile run. We had to do it in. 12, 12 minutes or something like that. So you're doing the oh, right. We did yeah. that with the Ranger at the Hartford with the Ranger system with Tortorella and yeah. And it's just that, that you know it's difficult. So I was so focused one year. One year I went into camp and I was always a bigger guy. Like I was had, was I played my best around 10, 12 percent body fat and I had so much energy. And I was at camp and there he just literally one of the trainers came in and just like like just body shamed me in front of everyone. So that was like in, in May. And then by like September, we got to camp, like a six pack, 4% body fat, high five and all the trainers. And I was absolutely the worst hockey player. I had no energy. I had no strength. I had nothing. I was absolutely terrible. Like it's, you have to train to make your body right. Like I was just training to impress the trainer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it was crazy, but I use that as motivation every day. And I look back at that and I haven't made that, didn't make that mistake again. Like it, it was so different. Like it just, I, I wrecked my body basically to, to, and I think it took me months and months to, to recover, like to get back to like where I was my best hockey, the best hockey player I could be and find a way to make my body work the best for me. Yeah. And that's weird. Yeah. Every, you have to know those, those ins and outs though of your own body and your own training. Like you, you take your season of, of whether it was a, a learning year or success and you got to, take that next summer and or not even just summer but spring summer off season and 
and how you can get better to that next level. And if you're not doing that, there's other guys out there that are. Yeah. They'll be falling behind really quickly. You got to learn from your mistakes basically and take ownership and just find a way to, to constantly kind of get better. Cause like you said, like everyone's always, there's always about to be somebody out there working. So. Yeah. How about, how, can you share any other teammate stories of, of what you've seen? Like any guys like that, that kind of wowed you if, like that guy's st- a great stick handler and he practices, you know, at the rink or, or at his house or he's shooting pucks all the time. Like, do you have any? Yeah. Cause you know what? It's the longer you play, like when you're playing in, in certain levels, but coming up, everything's done the same, but the older you get, the more pro and all that kind of stuff, you, you, everybody does their own thing. Right. And so it's amazing. That's what I mean with doing like the eye test and got guys juggling. Um, there's, there's always something you could do. Like it's so, I'm just like, can't really think of much else, but there's always guys with their balance stuff that, that work on it, but you would never really know that they work on it unless you kind of just found them on, you know what I mean? Cause yep. some, you know, it's, it's such a, like guys are doing squats on the BOSU ball. You know what I mean? With weights and yep. just, just to do something for their core. And there's always something you can do. And, and I don't know where you'd be able to find a lot of these exercises and stuff or yeah, not. You kind of have to, you know what I mean? You have to, I agree with you. I agree with you there. I mean, I've yeah. seen stuff myself. Um, and, but that's why, you know, just kind of being around sometimes is, is you're seeing some guy doing something. I know that uh, one of my old teammates, he used to say that when going to school, he used to chuck rocks in his backpack to just on the way there, you'd have a weight, basically that's like a weighted vest with yeah. lots on the way to, um, school when he walked there. So, like, I, I know that like, a couple years ago, like Jaeger does, Jeremy you know, Jaeger does like 100 squats a day or something like that. Right, right. And so, like, it's and that's why his legs and that's why he still plays. He just takes care of himself. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a good point about the rocks. Like, it's always I'm trying to think. Like, it's just, yeah, just it's hard because you don't, no one knows the right perfect thing to do, right? But if you don't try, then you don't, you're never going to know. Yeah, it's always thinking outside the box, even if it's something crazy. Um, yeah. I don't know, it just continues that, that whole habit of being creative. Creative, then it's going to lead to other things that you're going to be creative on the ice, you know, having that. Yeah. Well, that's the thing, too, is like I said, like when we were kids, or I was like 14, 15, we'd be playing street hockey. You know what I mean? We'd be playing World Cup street hockey in the driveway every day. Like we, how many, I don't know how many garage doors of my dad's we broke but got to the point where he had to buy a net to cover everything and <laughs> but and you know the, the the drive and the fights that would happen as kids just you know what i mean like how fun it was I and mean, it's just yeah so you gotta you there's got to be some way to find motivation like there's there's a lot of ways to find motivation but if you you know like i know that like i think it's tom brady and all these guys too they use certain things to make them mad and they get that that's what still drives them is they find things like people somebody telling you no you can't do it and and that motivates so you got to find some way to get motivation everywhere because otherwise you know when you get complacent and you stop improving you know it becomes very difficult yeah for sure anything else that you want to share with the players so, buddy. uh we appreciate you coming on and telling some of your junior stories and and all that but um, I think like at the end of the day, like you said, it just takes a lot of uh, passion, love for the game, commitment uh, and drive to want to get better and in, in different skills and, and to kind of prove yourself as a hockey player and athlete. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta have fun doing it too. Like right. if you're not having fun, it's just like, what's the point? Because yeah, yeah you're not probably not giving it your best. Yeah. So whatever it is, have fun and whatever. Yeah. Gonna go to something else eventually that they find. And yeah. And, um, yeah, whether that investment or whatever was worthwhile, which, you know, being in sports, there is a, uh, a plus to that anyways, even if, even if that's not going to yeah. be, the thing. um, well, there's life skills you'll get from that, you know, listening to others, taking, taking, uh, taking advice or not taking advice, being coachable, um, the locker room, like the camaraderie, meeting new people all the time, working together, like as a team yeah. versus, you know, an individual sport and some people are better at individual sports just because the team thinks it's not for them, which, which is fine. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now that I'm, I guess out of playing wise now becoming, I guess you'd say a younger coach, uh, three years into this, but you just see the differences of players, uh, to 
I guess, guys in my age and then also parents, right? Just the leadership, uh, the differences, you know, some kids just have natural leadership qualities and some, some don't at all. Um, and then you come into guys that have gone through it, you know, in perspective that you learn a lot within playing all these sports, but also having a long hockey career. And then also too, with parents, right. Just, just being the mentors for their kids and role models. Some have some, and some, some could work. Um, but it's, yeah, it's just, I guess, I guess that's the way of life these days of, of trying to get things through the sports and through hockey. Just if you're, if you're the parent out there, don't be the parent that's yelling at the ref of the whole game or banging the glass and the breaking the glass. And just, Cause your kid gets embarrassed by it too. So. <laughs> right. Well, th- all right. Well, thanks a lot there, Sean, for, for coming on and sharing your advice. See you buddy. Talk soon.